வணக்கம் நமஸ்தே நமஸ்கார் வெல்கம் பேக் டு ஜல் பிரயாக் டுடே ஐம் கோயிங் டு டூ த செகண்ட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் த லோட் லைன் வீடியோ விச் ஐட் மேட் ஓர்லியர் இஃப் யூ ரிமெம்பர் வி ஹேட் டாக்ட் அபவுட் த ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் லோட் லைன்ஸ் அண்ட் டுடே ஐம் கோயிங் டு கண்டினியூ வித் த நெக்ஸ்ட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் இட் விச் இஸ் யுவர் டிம்பல் லோட் லைன் so let us uh, quickly look into uh, the brief history and then continue for timber part of it this might be a comparatively small video because i have split the standard load lines and timber load lines separately so let us have a look on first of all the load lines so let us see what is the history behind the load lines see load lines were based on international load line convention so what was the purpose of this load line convention uh, the main purpose was to assign ships with a maximum limit to load now uh, why should you give this maximum limit the idea was to guarantee a fixed freeboard and if you remember as per our definitions earlier freeboard is directly related to your reserve buoyancy so for me reserve buoyancy is very important as uh, that is the one which ensures uh, my safety vessel safety and these load lines as i had shown you earlier the load line chart the load line charts are divided into regions so you can always divide the world into different regions starting from tropical to the polar regions and similarly there are seasons also so the main criteria for load line chart was to uh, give an assign different load line limits based on the region and the season what we saw earlier was in the load line grid we saw a couple of marks for uh, sea water and then additional marks for fresh water so this is what we saw in the last video now in case you load any uh, port which is in between fresh water and sea water it is called dock water so of course your limits will be based on the dock water allowance in between your fresh water and sea water now uh, end of the day the whole idea of load lines the purpose of this convention was to have a ship which ensure safety of the vessel crew and environment and uh, when it is implemented and it is followed properly yes you will be achieving the same thing i had mentioned uh, the previous load line was a standard load line and now i'm going to talk about a different uh, version of it so i can categorize them basically into a standard load line which we have already dealt with in detail in the last video and now i am going to look at timber load line so uh, let us look at who is supposed to follow the timber load line the standard load line is for all the ships but your timber load line is specific it is for ships carrying timber as deck cargo please remember i have highlighted the word deck that means you are supposed to carry it on deck i'll uh, support this with a few pictures let us just uh, see a few pictures also now before i start off uh, ships carrying timber deck cargo should also comply with the code of safe working practices for the uh, ships carrying tim- timber deck cargo i'll just show you a picture you can see this timber what they have loaded is on the deck now uh, you should realize i could have loaded this timber inside my hold also so that means if i load timber inside the hold and then close all my hatch batten down and seal it properly then it is not considered for taking the advantage of timber load lines this is only for deck cargo which means it is carried on uncovered deck something like this so it is on the uncovered deck and below this timber you will have your normal holds and hatch covers as usual okay this is timber deck cargo 
Now, there are a few criteria. I'm not going into the timber code, but I'll just quickly tell you, if you want to take advantage of the timber load lines, then you should ensure that the timber which is on the deck is properly and compactly stored and then properly lashed and secured. Now, why is this? Because the wood itself is a floater, so it is going to provide me additional buoyancy. So this is the uh, advantage I'm going to take. I'm going to use the additional buoyancy of the timber, which is wood. And that is the reason I can go ahead, use my timber load lines, which gives me some extra allowance. So uh, let us see that one by one. So the reason for me to use timber load lines is, number one, I should be loading it on deck and it should be compactly and properly stored and properly secured. Now, uh, this analogy I can relate to, to a life jacket. So everyone knows what is a life jacket. The idea of life jacket, it, it is that it should become a part of your body. Now, uh, what is the problem with this life jacket? Life jacket is a lifesaver, but it can become danger in case you are not worn properly. That means the donning instructions were not adhered to, or if not secured properly. And one more is if the size is not fitting you properly. So these three reasons can make life jacket instead of a savior it can become opposite also. So very similar to that is your timber deck cargo. So the timber deck cargo becomes a part of your vessel provided it is stored properly and secured properly. So then it becomes a part of the vessel and it gives you extra buoyancy. Now, based on this condition, as far as you follow the code and uh, uh, Stick on to whatever is required as per safety. Now your load line convention allows us to load extra. That means the freeboard can be reduced than the normal ship. Now, when we talk about the limber, uh, timber load lines, you should remember how does it differentiate visually between the standard load lines and the timber load line. You will see a prefix called L, which is Lima. The Lima stands for lumber. You would have heard about the word lumberjack. So it is someone related to a carpenter or related to someone who works with the wood. So Lima is prefixed. So this is how you differentiate between your standard load line and your timber load line. Now, just to give you a, a quick overview, I'm going to go a little bit more uh, detail as per the each line is concerned. If you see, I have marked this as starboard side. For a reason, I have marked it as forward also. You can see I have marked it as forward. We have already discussed that the standard grid is going to be forward of your plimsoll line or the plimsoll mark, the plimsoll circle or the disc, load line disc. So standard one is going to be forward. Now, similarly, this timber load line is going to be on the aft side. Now you can see the marks are prefixed with the Lima. Let me show you just one more picture because this picture does not have many dimensions. You should realize one thing. The normal grid is 540 millimeter forward. It's written here. Similarly, it is 540 millimeter aft for your uh, timber load lines. So one more picture showing you the same similar ones, except that it has got some more uh, distance marked. You can see it is marked with X and Y and they have written what is it. I'm going to show you that in the next slide. Again, this picture also shows you the starboard side. Let us go to my picture, which I had used last time. And uh, if you remember, uh, we had discussed about the various uh, salt water marks and the fresh water marks. And here also I've shown you the starboard side. You can see I've marked everything. Let me go on the timber part of it. So I'm going to show you the lumber grid. 
So I'm going to place this lumber grid, which is 540 millimeter aft of your plimsoll or center or your midship. You can call it midship also. Now, the first thing the load line convention assigns you is your timber summer draft, or it is called lumber summer draft. It is assigned to you. So I'm going to mark that first. So let us mark as lumber summer. Now, based on this, the rest of the data are governed. So let us see what is the difference between your standard load lines and your timber load lines. Let me start first with going down, that is towards winter, which is your lumber winter. Please see the change. It is one by 36 of your lumber summer draft. If you compare this the standard load line, I'll show you here, it was one by 48. So you should realize one by 36 is a greater value. So the distance between lumber summer and the winter is more than the normal standard ships. This is more. Okay, then let us go on the top side. When you go up, I'm looking at your tropical, lumber tropical, which is exactly the same as before on your standard road lines. So I'm going to have lumber tropical. Now, besides this, I can have something called winter North Atlantic also. It is easy to remember that the lumber North Atl winter North Atlantic is at exactly the same level as your standard WNA mark. They're both at the same level, provided it is for ships equal to or less than 100 meters sailing in North Atlantic in winter. So that is when it is applicable. Okay, now what we have seen is these four marks are for salt water. Now, what about the fresh water? Now, again, fresh water can be related to the fresh water allowance. Now, I have something else called as lumber fresh water allowance. Why? Because the assigned summer draft for lumber is different. So, based on that, based on the displacement, you can always have a fresh water allowance for your timber side. So you'll have a value of that. When you go exactly on top of the summer, you can mark your lumber freshwater. So this is summer freshwater for timber deck cargo. Now, very similarly, the same lumber freshwater allowance can be applied to the tropical also. So when you apply the tropical, I'm going to get something called lumber tropical freshwater. Now you will see one more similarity between the standard and the timber uh, grid. You will see this is also one by 48. You can see on your standard also is one by 48 and on the timber also it is one by 48. So this is the difference between your standard and your timber load lines. This picture is not to scale. So please don't uh, try to compare it. It is only to show you with the depiction. To understand the concept, that is what it is. Now, uh, this is a, a picture of a ship which shows both uh, your standard and your lumber or your timber load lines grid. You can see, as I had mentioned to you, the standard one is forward of the plimsoll or the load line disc. And the timber is on the aft. So that is the reason. I have mentioned this as port side. That was the reason I mentioned the port side. Well, uh, that's the end of this uh, short video. Uh, I hope it was useful for you to compare between your standard and the timber. I do have a very small, uh, even smaller video than this one, uh, which will give you some additional information on load lines, but uh, I'm not going to do, do it so soon. I'll take some more time on that. I'll try to get some uh, pictures to support. It makes more sense than just theoretical. Uh, basically, I'm planning to uh, put a small break on uh, stability topics right now. I'll call this as a season one. So we have finished the season one. I'm going to go back to more on navigation chart work and uh, rest of the subjects from now onwards. So uh, you'll be watching more uh, 
navigational topics and let us see if i can divert from uh, topics which are not related to the subject also so you can catch me soon on that uh, please do uh, keep watching jal prayag but uh, a small suggestion for uh, the viewers all these videos what i am making is very very basic as i said that my intention is bsc and uh, the first time was appearing for second mate exam but uh, what i feel is uh, the bsc nautical science students who are coming in for your phase 1 and phase 2 for them also there's quite a big gap between what you studied in 3 years and then when you sailed and you're coming back for your exams and we all know that uh, we forget a lot of things quite fast so uh, these videos will help you to refresh or i would call it reboot your memory system also and at the same time you cannot afford to do mistakes uh, on the basics when you are going for orals and for written so uh, i suggest i think anyone can watch these videos uh, please do uh, comment if you uh, feel that uh, i need to change something the first change today what i have done is i removed my virtual background that was a feedback from couple of my students uh, but anyway uh, i might be using the virtual background or quite often uh, it is possible depending on uh, how the ambient uh, daylight is uh, today it was a bright sunny day so i could get good light near my uh, computer a little bit of clutter is there on my back side but i try to put in some uh, artistic uh, values you can see couple of posters please do keep uh, letting me know if something is needed which i can change uh, i'll be glad to do it if it warrants so anyway uh, right now uh, thank you for watching and vanakam namaste namaskar i'll catch you soon